Do you need to learn how to adjust the idle mixer screws on your Holly Carb? Well, you're in the right place. What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I need to set up this Holly carburetor for my 347 stroker that I just put in my car. This is a new carburetor, so I need to go through and adjust all of the settings to get this thing dialed in for, for my motor and for what I have. Uh, on your, in your scenario, if you have a brand new carb, you should be in a position to just go ahead and put it in the car and start with it there. But if you've got a used carb and you don't know where the settings are, we'll cover what you need to do to get that set up. So let's get started. So what I have here is a Holley 4160, very popular, very common Holley carburetor. It's 750 CFM. It's got vacuum secondaries instead of mechanical secondaries. But if you have mechanical secondaries, it's a very similar process to dial in in these auto mixer screws. We'll go over that. And then I've got electric choke. Again, this is a, a very common carb, very easy to set up. And we're gonna go through the various steps that what we need to do. You do need to know there's gonna be three things that we're gonna adjust here but you're gonna adjust them after your car gets warm. I'll go over the stuff now, but I'm gonna get the car warmed up. And once the car is warmed up, we'll dive into adjusting the screws and get everything set in. But it's gonna take a few minutes for that to get done. But before we do that, let's go over the stuff we're gonna adjust and then we'll get the car warmed up. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to point out is the curb idle screw right here. This is what we're gonna to adjust to change the RPM. Once the car gets warmed up, we'll dial that one in. We also have this adjustment right here. This spring and bolt is on the accelerator pump lever, and we're gonna talk about that here in a minute, about what we need to do to get that set up. And then we have the idle mixer screw. There's one right here on the front, and then on the other side, there's another screw in the same relative location. You're gonna to wanna to adjust both of those, but we'll adjust them individually as we go through. If you had mechanical secondaries, you'd have another idle mixer screw back here, right by the bolt, just like you do in the front. You'd have one on that side, and then you'd have one on this side. I don't have that because I have vacuum secondaries and that's okay. The other thing I wanna point out too is these ports. This is a ported setup here for your vacuum advance if you're gonna use that. And then underneath the bowl here, there's another port that's the manifold vacuum port. We're gonna use that when we dial in the auto mixer screws. So make sure you, you know where that's at and you pull the cap off of that. So what if you get a car but you don't know the history on it, you don't know what the settings were. So what do you need to do to get it set up? Well, one of the first things you can do is this curb idle screw, and it's, it's a common to, to twist it all the way in, to spin it all the way to the bottom, but you don't need to bury it in there. Just turn it till it stops, and then turn it out one full revolution. You may find that a half a revolution, three quarters, maybe one and a quarter, you may find that you know in your setup you want a little bit different adjustment, but that's just kind of a, a rule of thumb of where to start. Same thing with the idle mixture screws. If you don't know what those are set at, let's take them all the way in, but you don't need to bury that needle, just take it until it stops, and then bring it out about one and a half turns. That's a, that's a fair place to start. And it, it's some place that, you know, if, if anything, it might be a little rich and that's okay because it's safer to be rich. The last thing that we want to adjust is your accelerator pump screw here. So we don't want this adjusted so that it's pushing on the accelerator pump lever, but we don't want it so that the lever can have some play. For example, if we lift up the screw, the screw here in the spring, you see how the lever comes up? Really what we want is to see where it kind of goes down and stops and that's where we want the bottom of this screw to meet up with that and it's a 3 8 nut and a 3 8 bolt here you can use a couple of wrenches to adjust that and what you want is this adjusted so there's so the length of this screw is such that it's just barely touching this accelerator pump but not pushing down on the accelerator pump because you don't want it to put fuel in just by sitting here on idle. We want it just below. You almost be able to put a piece of paper between the head of this bolt and this accelerator lever it would be about where you want. And if you can see on mine, yes, when I lift it up, that lever comes up, but it doesn't push down on the lever. And it's hard to tell here in the video, but that's the setting that you want before we fire everything up. So the tools that we're gonna need is a pair of 3 8 inch wrenches, just so we can make this adjustment. And then after that, all you need is a flathead screwdriver and then a vacuum gauge. You don't need to have a fancy vacuum gauge, but just something like this will work. I got this at Harbor Freight. So this is something that's very that's sufficient for what we're doing and it'll be fine. And we're gonna hook this port or hook this hose up to the manifold vacuum port that's just underneath the front bowl here. And we're gonna make sure you cap off the ported port over here where I had the distributor line plugged into. So what we're looking for on this vacuum gauge is the highest vacuum reading of our setup. Now on this particular gauge here, it's got a green zone for a normal motor. If this was a normal motor, I'd be making more vacuum at idle, but because of the cam that I have, I'm not gonna be making as much vacuum and that's okay, that's fine. What I'm looking for is the highest vacuum reading with whatever this needle falls out. That's where I want 
this to set my idle mixture screws is whatever the highest vacuum I can get. And we're gonna do that by adjusting the screws on the either side here. And we'll start with one and we'll do the other. But before we do that, let's again, we gotta get the car warmed up. You can't do this when it's cold. You can't do it when the choke is doing its thing. You gotta get the car warmed up. And in this case, I have electric fans, so it probably wouldn't hurt to, to have my motor cycle through the electric fans a couple times just so that I know the motor's nice and warm and it's happy and it's good to go. And then we're gonna set the idle speed to where we want it to be first. In this particular car, I want it between eight and 900 RPMs is about where it's happy. It's gonna be different on your car. You're gonna to wanna to know where, where you need to set that at, but that's where you're gonna to wanna to start. And as we adjust these idle mixture screws, our RPM is gonna change. So again, it's difficult to do this when the car's running, but I'll show you now. When we hook this up and we start adjusting these, we're gonna adjust it. We'll start dialing it in until the needle starts to change and then we'll dial it out and we're gonna find where the highest vacuum is with this one and then we're gonna do the other side. And then we're gonna take a look at the RPM and see where it's at. And if the RPM has changed, we're gonna to wanna to adjust our curb idle screw to get it back to the RPM we wanna be and then we'll come back and we'll do another round with these idle mixture screws. So let's go ahead and get the car warmed up, plug in the vacuum gauge and start adjusting everything. So I'm about ready to start adjusting the idle mixture screws and I get the screwdriver in there and I start to twist it and then the fan kicks on and it changes the RPM of the motor because of the load on the alternator. See, I'm pointing at the needle, pointing at the fans because it's changed the RPM of the motor. I wait till it stops. Once it stops, there, the vacuum settles down. Now I can go back to adjusting the idle mixture screw here on the driver's side. I'm just trying to find that happy spot where the needle's the highest. Now over on the passenger side, same thing. Right now I'm dialing it in, which I'm leaning it out, pulling a little bit of fuel out till the needle drops. When it drops, I want to back, I'll go the other direction, which makes it a little bit fatter, a little, a little richer, get a little more fuel in there, and get that thing to the happy spot where the needle is the highest. Now I check the RPM. The RPM is just a little higher than I want it, so I'm going to turn it down just a pinch, get about 50 RPMs less. Now I gotta go back and readjust the idle mixture screws again just to make sure that they're in the sweet spot. No, again, right when I was doing that, the fans kick on again and I gotta I gotta stop. Wait for the fans to stop spinning. Now that's done, I can go back and I can start to fine tune the idle mixture screws. And one last time on the passenger side, just little fine adjustments, little tiny, little tiny adjustments just to get that needle as high as I can. And with this cam that I have, it's not perfect, so I'm trying the best I can. So as you can see, it's a balancing act between adjusting your curb idle screw and your idle mixture screws. And if you had the mechanical secondaries, you'd just be doing the same thing to the back here. I don't have those, so I don't have to worry about adjusting that, but you would just add that to the steps as you go around and adjusting everything. And when you adjust the front set, you want to go back and adjust the rear set, then take a look at your RPM, adjust that, go back around, and do it as many times as you need to till you feel happy with it. This, this adjustment of the accelerator pump, you just do that at the beginning. You don't need to worry about that afterwards, so that should be good to go. And then you're set. There's a couple of things you can do to dial in your carb. You know, you can see on my carb, I've got these, these sight glasses on, on the bowls here. You know, adjusting that's done through here, but that's a, that would be a different video. This is just getting you set up to your, to set up your, idle mixture screws in your curb idle just to get the carb you know happy and and so it's idling again I'm, i got lucky because this is a brand new carb so it's more or less set out of the box but i still need to dial it in for my motor which is what you're going to want to do with your setup so it takes care of that guys i got a couple more things to do as i dial in this motor and make it happy but if you guys like the video give me a thumbs up and if you subscribe i appreciate it because it helps my channel out and we'll see you in the next one